an engineer for Make, and today I'm joined by Michael Castor. Uh, today we're going to be talking about 3D printing. Um, so actually, before we really get started, Michael, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us about your experience with 3D printing and your, your interests in the field, I guess. Sure thing. So um, my name is Michael Castor. I work for the Makershed, um, technically the product curator. I first started out in CNC machines, and that was uh, a couple years ago. I built my own machine. And uh, ever since, I've been watching kind of the rise of 3D printing, and it's been really fascinating that you can take a digital file and transform it into something tangible. Um, so last year I decided to buy a, I got a PrinterBot, let's see, it's the PrinterBot Plus. And uh, I've loved it. I've been playing with it constantly. And uh, recently at the last Maker Faire New York, I picked up an Ultimaker, which has been really cool too. So uh, unfortunately I had a bad part on it, so it's out of commission until I can get a new part. But um, I'm really excited to get that one working as well. Cool. So, uh, like I said, I'm Eric Weinhofer. I do product development for the Makershed here. Um, I've been involved in 3D printing since late 2009. I was actually an intern with MakerBot Industries when they were still under 10 people. Um, so that was exciting. Back in the day of the cupcake and zeroing the, the extruder by hand and all that fun stuff. So before we really get into it, um, today is a very exciting day for us here in Sebastopol, School, but also across the country because it is the first day that our ultimate guide to 3D printing is on newsstands. So this is now available on the Maker Shed um, online where it's been for the last few days, um, but also in Barnes and Nobles and micro centers across the country. Um, so this issue is jam-packed with information on 3D printing and also the main uh, attraction here is a spread on 15 different 3D printers. Um, we reviewed 15 different ones during a weekend here back in September. Um, went really in depth, did a bunch of test parts. Um, there's a ton of information about it on the website. Um, so yeah, really exciting stuff. Um, also, we have two special promos uh, and exciting things to announce. First, um, having to do with the special issue, if you go to makezine.com slash subscribe and subscribe for one year of make uh, for $24.95, you can get a copy of the special issue for free uh, if you type in the code MK3D. Um, another awesome deal, we are giving away a MakerBot Replicator 2, a dual extruder version, um, and to, there's no real catch. You can go to makezine.com slash 3D dash printer dash sweepstakes and enter to win a MakerBot replicator. So do that right now. Was it the one or the two? It's the one. A dual The extruder. one, okay. Yep. Uh -huh. um, cool. So uh, another thing you, you may be able to hear, um, I actually have one of our Ultimakers here next to me. Um, we are printing out a little robot. Uh, we've been printing an army of robots over the last few days. Um, and at the end of this print, the Ultimaker will automatically kick it off the bed uh, with its fan shroud and start another print. So, um, Michael, if I rudely interrupt you and start pointing to the Ultimaker, that's why. <laughs> that's um, okay. It's probably more interesting. <laughs> so even though 3D printers are tools, um, we'll, we'll get to that. But we first want to talk about tools that we commonly use and what we think other people should use for maintaining their 3D printers. Um, so let's start with, I guess, the build platform itself. Um, so a lot of the machines like uh, the MakerBot come with Kapton tape, which is this high temperature resistant tape, um, really good for printing with ABS. Um, Michael, have you, do you use this on your printer bot? I do indeed. I got an 8-inch roll, so I wouldn't have the little seams in the middle. And uh -huh. a lot of people are intimidated by it because it's kind of hard to get on with it being absolutely flat. Yeah. Um, but I watched some tutorials online, and if you get a squirt bottle and fill it with soapy water and give it a little sprays on the sticky side and on the glass, then you can use a squeegee and get it nice and flat, and uh, then you don't have to worry about any air bubbles or anything. You can just squeegee all the air bubbles out or all uh -huh. the liquid bubbles. And then you get this beautiful surface when it dries. And then you can just go around and cut off the edges with an exacto knife, and it is, it's perfect. So is there any real downtime there, or do you just tape it and then start up your, 
your bed heater and your bed heater and it it dries just like that. You, you do have to let it dry. Um, I use a gla I use a piece of glass that I got cut from Lowe's. I think it was like three bucks, just an eight inch by eight inch piece. Mm -hmm. And uh, I let it dry overnight. And then the next day I was printing on it. It's it's perfect. And it's so much easier because if you're like me, you get tape everywhere and it sticks to whatever and there's dog hair that gets on it or human hair, or, you know, anything else. Um, and that stuff bugs me. I'm a little OCD about that. So uh, the soapy water works perfectly. Yeah, I know dealing with um, our MakerBot replicators here, they have a pretty big bed. I think it's like mm, eight-ish inches by something under eight inches. Um, and we do also have a big roll of this stuff. And I am, I need to try that soapy water trick because I am absolutely horrendous at pulling <laughs> out that long sheet and trying to lay it down. And like you start at one side and then use a, a scraper to get the air bubbles out and it just never works. Um, yeah, it's almost impossible to do um, yeah. without the soapy water. Mm -hmm. uh, sounds. And still, even with soapy water, you, it still takes you some time to get it. But, you know, it, eventually you'll figure it out. It takes a little bit of practice. Um, have you ever had any issues with things sticking to Kapton tape? Um, I don't think so. I've, I've really only ever used it on a heated bed, uh, except for actually this Ultimaker. Uh, one of our interns, Eric Chu, put put some Kapton on there. And I'm actually not sure why he did, but it's it's working just fine. So. Oh, that's cool.